20 wins and 20 brutal stoppages. In his last five fights, each man has retired on his stall, unable to continue, and one man on his record tragically lost his life. You may or may not have heard the name, but either way now you're gonna remember him. This is everything you need to know about the most dangerous man in the sport right now, Subrael Matias. This guy is a very bad man. Very bad man. Strapping. Yes, they only come along every so often. The Mike Tysons, the Golovkins, the Inoue's. They almost look superhuman, not just getting the job done in the ring, but doing it in demolition style. It's pure brutality, pure ferociousness. And the opposition normally have that look on their face to say, bloody hell, I feel like I'm fighting that metal bloke from Terminator fucking 2. Yes, and this man is of that calibre. Tipped by Terence Crawford to be the next big thing. Going about his business relatively under the radar, but knocking on the door of the super lightweight household names but the big question is will they even be willing to set foot in the ring with him well let me explain why yes so let me give you a little backstory of his incredible turbulent journey Matias is a 31 year old Puerto Rican fighter and current IBF super lightweight champion he was no stranger to violence growing up on the tough Puerto Rican streets falling into gang culture and fighting on a regular basis and it was this rough lifestyle that led to him being shot at over 30 times by two gunmen back in 2012. Remarkably, he was hit by two bullets below the waist, but he survived. And although he recovered, he then found himself in prison soon after, serving a total of 19 months for reasons he doesn't wish to talk about. However, this was nowhere near the full extent of his difficulties growing up, as he has been quoted saying he's witnessed many people, even family members, killed before his very eyes over the years. But luckily, boxing gave him a grounding and a pathway out of that world. As an amateur, he never took it seriously, fighting drunk on more than one occasion but with the passing of his brother Yankel in 2015 he now had something to fight for and that very same year he made his professional debut a first round knockout of course and now here we are present day his record stands at 20 wins and one loss but as mentioned every man he's faced has been stopped the one loss to Ananyan was soon avenged with the Russian retiring after nine rounds and retirement seems to be a common theme with this man due to the onslaught that he delivers being too much to bear of his 12 official knockouts only one has made it past the halfway stage of the fight and the other eight that retired were likely on their way to that fate as well now you may be thinking ah yeah good record but who's he fault well considering four of the last five fighters he retired were undefeated it really does show that he's no gimmick and some of you may also be thinking yeah but come on how come I ain't heard of him then well that's because nobody yes nobody is mentioning his name he's one of them fighters that the champions would consider to be in the who needs him club but he's not just in the who needs him club he's in the fuck that no thank you club the old I'll give that a bit of a royal swerve club I like my face not looking like a kebab when I get out the ring so I best not mention his fucking name for the time I'm being bruv club yes that club as well he's the definition of the boogeyman so yes before we talk about his future let's talk about his style well he's got a very unorthodox style as you can see the low hands never being known to be effective for a high punch output but Matthias throws the rule book out the window producing a regular flurry of combinations sometimes over a hundred punches around barely leaving the opposition with any time to think now to be fair he may not look very scary with that little fucking poodle on his head but the power is certainly scary again unconventional but he throws mainly arm punches it's nearly all shoulder action compared to someone like Golovkin who produces his power from the hips Matias doesn't wind up like fighters usually do but in fairness to him he simply doesn't need to the punches are sharp quick and extremely heavy I'll tell you what though imagine if he did load up you probably end up like that bloke at the end of fucking speed bosh anyway the onslaught is combined with relentless pressure he may not be known for being a one punch knockout artist but the non-stop pace takes everything out of the man in front of him always comes forward and really finding himself on the back foot however that does open him up to getting hit now and again he's definitely not afraid to take a punch but it did become his undoing when he received a standing count in his only loss to a Nanyan a count that may have actually lost him the close fight though some fans still thought he won the bout in spite of this but yes regardless of his openness luckily he's got an exceptional chin and although his defense is considered a weakness the no fear mentality only adds to the excitement of this thrilling fighter so check out this vid from the double legend 
friends at Skiller who break down how good this man is a lot fucking better than me, bosh. And it's a blinding channel, by the way, I ruddy love it. Now, unfortunately, the talent of Matia sadly caused unbeaten Maxine Dadashev to lose his life after their fight in 2019. When the bout was stopped after 11 gruelling rounds, Maxine needed help getting out of the ring and never made it to his dressing room. At the hospital, he required emergency surgery for a bleed on the brain, but after being placed in a coma, his condition worsened and on July the 23rd, he sadly passed away. Bob Arum kindly paid for the funeral and the generous fan set up a GoFundMe page that raised money for his loving family that he left behind. He was a rising star, an absolute credit to boxing and died doing what he loved. Big up this legend of the sport, he will always be remembered in our boxing hearts. Now then, Matias picked up his IBF title against Jeremiah Ponce back in February, which has done him a favour because without a belt, he probably wouldn't be mentioned at all alongside the bigger names since he's such a risk with no reward. But the belt gives him sway to hopefully land a big fight in the near future. Though as we have mentioned, still none of the big boys have really called out his name. They know they would be in for a brutal night's work and unfortunately a smaller payday as things stand. But yes, ultimately, he poses a serious threat to Garcia who having struggled with Tank recently may find Matias to be Tank on overdrive. He will be absolutely unresponsive to Haney's power and serious pressure has been known to be a problem for Haney in the past and the Lopez or Pro Grey fights can't help but be wars. Again though, Matias being a different breed of fighter to anyone they've ever been in the ring with. So yes, it's going to be ruddy exciting when he finally does get a crack at the big money fights, though we could be waiting a while. Either way though, it's time to take notice of this man because whenever he sets foot in the ring, you will not be disappointed. Yes, super smashing great. So then don't forget to check out the pod. I'm sure you won't forget. I mention it all the fucking time. But anyway, do check it out because you might get a little giggle. I'll see you soon. Total pippage for now and bosh.